So having looked at handsets and networks, let's just think about best deployment choices for a moment. If we only want mobility within the office, then our SIP decked handset is going to be the best. But if we want mobility stretching further, we could use Wi-Fi only handsets, but only if we don't need GSM or CDMA. And there can't be many of us out there that don't need that kind of connectivity. And so it tends to be either the dual mode handset, like the Nokia E-series phones, or a PDA, such as a Windows mobile device, on to which you can put a SIP client, or an EX or IAX client, providing, of course, they do have Wi-Fi connectivity. And the other option that we didn't really discuss, um, but is still a valid option, is using a soft client on a laptop, which is similar to putting a soft client on your PDA, but um, means you don't have to have a separate device. You can just run with the laptop. In terms of hooking up to a GSM network, then our least cost routing options are the gateway box that we just talked about, easy integration, no worries about slot compatibility, and a range of boxes that makes life easy for us in terms of scaling and uh, choices as to whether we buy one, two or four SIM or maybe even a 30 SIM box. The gateway card is very neat, um, generally only up to four SIMs per card, and we do have those compatibility issues that I talked about. So let's just gaze into the future. Um, but before we do that, just talk about what we've got right now. As I said at the beginning of the presentation, I don't really believe that we've got true fixed mobile convergence. What we've got is fixed mobile coincidence, two devices in one handset. We do have battery life issues on current dual mode handsets. And even after optimizations to make some of that stuff better, from a user experience point of view, it still feels like two separate devices in the same box. Um, voice over 3G is going to make things very interesting. And I've already tried that very successfully, but only, of course, in city center locations. When you get out into the countryside, 3G coverage drops off. And of course, that makes it um, a useless option when you're out in those rural locations. Now, looking to the future, We've got these things called femtocells that you may have heard of. And femtocells are like a mini cell tower in your office or home. And they use your existing broadband connection to connect back to the mobile network. Um, and your GSM or CDMA handset or, or whatever hooks up to that. So, for instance, as you walk into your house or office, your GSM handset would roam off the main network, which is sometimes called the macro network, and onto this femtocell, giving you perfect in-building coverage. It's a VoIP device, but currently closed by the mobile network operators. What would be great is to see them open it up and then run something like embedded asterisk on it, so that we can have the PBX in that device as well. And then we'd have great potential for least cost routing, because we could route our regular calls just straight over a SIP trunk and only route the GSM calls back over their network. So let's look at the warp now. And this is an exciting development. Here's a picture of the warp with the GSM integration. And you'll remember that some of the issues I mentioned around GSM integration with the cards were compatibility and drivers. Well, of course, if you're already using the Pika warp, um, there's not going to be any compatibility issues at all. You just put the Pika GSM card inside the warp and the integration is done for you. There's no slot incompatibility to worry about because these are purpose designed for the job. The other issues that you might come across with cards is, of course, drivers. And uh, Pika have worked things out here so that when you put the card into the slot and power up the Pika warp, um, the device will recognize it's got the card and apply the drivers to it. You just have to do some minor manual configuration, but nothing too scary. And of course, the great advantage here is it's such a neat solution. Um, it's got the neatness of cards, but without any of the disadvantages of cards at all. So it's a rather clever and neat solution. And the statistics around this are the Pika Warp um, can handle up to about 30 concurrent conversations going on through it. So it's very, very well placed for the small to medium enterprise. 
And uh, just uh, something of interest for you to look at here, the Open BTS project, where BTS is base station transceiver system, um, has been put together by some guys. You can find more details at openbts.sourceforge.net, where they have constructed um, a GSM base station entirely out of open source components and hooked it up to Asterisk. And they've tested this. Of course, you have to be very careful about testing out GSM stuff because it's licensed spectrum. But the Open BTS group did this at the Burning Man Festival, which is somewhere out in the middle of nowhere in a desert. And they successfully tested this out and had regular GSM phones, you know, like the 20 or 30 bucks um, GSM phone hooked up to Asterisk over the GSM air interface. Very interesting indeed. Anyway, let's move on to the summary of what we've covered. Um, in short, wireless can save you lots of money in lots of different ways, um, reducing your hard infrastructure costs, um, enabling roaming, and allowing least cost routing or least cost routing to be performed. We looked at wireless technologies, and we looked at SIP deck phones, Wi-Fi only phones, the dual mode phones from people like Nokia and gateways for hooking up to wireless networks. Then we talked about some um, given deployment scenarios and what would make the best choice and I hope now that we've been through all the different options that you feel better placed to make the right choices for your next deployments and when we talked about what was coming next for VoIP and wireless we examined the femto cells and we just need the mobile network operators to be a bit more open and we need to have those femto cells with something like embedded asterisk integrated there so we can do least cost routing with them and lastly, we looked at the Pika Warp appliance with GSM integration. It's a totally integrated solution that gets over the issues of card integration, but has all of the benefits of it. And of course, um, with the Warp, you could add a Wi-Fi device to it too, um, to have a total wireless scenario. I hope you've enjoyed the presentation. You can find more information about the Pika Warp at www.pikatech.com. Um, if you're interested in Asterisk consultancy and training, please visit asterisk-training.co.uk or the Telespeak homepage at www.telespeak.co.uk. I've enjoyed giving this presentation to you. I hope you found it useful. And if you'd like to get in contact with me, you can do so by emailing me at david.duffit at telespeak.co.uk. Thank you very much for attending this presentation, and I wish you every success with your IP and wireless deployments.